Coping with COVID, updates on the pandemic, and information to help you thrive and survive COVID-19. It's brought to you by SCDHEC. Visit scdhec.gov for an updated list of testing and vaccination sites and info to help protect yourself, your family, and friends from the coronavirus. SCDHEC, healthy people, healthy communities. In it together, SC and the South Carolina Diabetes Advisory Council presenting Wellness Wednesday every Wednesday on Coping with COVID. The City of Columbia Office of Business Opportunities, helping to meet the needs of small, minority, and women-owned businesses in the City of Columbia. Visit columbiasc.net backslash OBO. Agape Counseling and Training Services. Call 803-779-2777 for licensed professionals of counselors and social workers helping families, engaged and married couples, and individuals of all ages gain an understanding of all aspects of their lives. If you're having a challenge coping with COVID, visit Agape Counseling and Training services at agapects.com. The Comet Bus System, a fast, fun, friendly transit system that can take you anywhere you want to go in the Midlands. So don't miss your shot. Catch the Comet and get a free ride to get your COVID vaccine. Visit catchthecomet.gov. Javis Tax Services, South Carolina's premier full-service financial provider with over 20 years of experience. Palmetto Media Connections, connecting media and communities together. And Computers Unique, Dutch Square Mall. Call Daniel for honest, professional, reliable, and knowledgeable computer sales and service. Coping with COVID from SCDHEC. In it together, the South Carolina Diabetes Advisory Council, the City of Columbia Office of Business Opportunities, Agape Counseling and Training Services, the Comet Bus System, Palmetto Media Connections, Javis Financial Services, and Computers Unique. Coping. Coping with COVID with Trey Taylor. Our fellow Americans. Right now, the COVID-19 vaccines are available to millions of Americans. And soon, they will be available to everyone. The science is clear. These vaccines will protect you and those you love from this dangerous and deadly disease. They could save your life. So we urge you to get vaccinated when it's available to you. That's the first step to ending the pandemic and moving our country forward. It's up to you. Good Thursday afternoon to you. I'm Trey Taylor, and you are watching Coping with COVID, updates on the pandemic, and information to help you thrive and survive COVID-19. As you heard, it's brought to you by SCDHEC, the City of Columbia Office of Business Opportunities, Agape Counseling and Training Center, also Computers Unique, Palmetto Media Connections, and the Comet Bus System. Coping with COVID is also brought to you by Javis Financial Services, serving the state of South Carolina for over 20 years. We're so glad that you're joining us today and want to remind you that you can get your copy of the Dash for Good Health Southern Soul Cookbook and a Coping with COVID face mask. It's free to anyone who wants one. Just please post in the chat, I want a Dash for Good Health cookbook and someone will contact you to get your mailing address and we'll get it out for you. Well, today we're letting you know about COVID efforts in Columbia, South Carolina, vaccines and baby needs. Columbia City Council and Reverend Ed McDowell joins us with community organizer and MLK Community Association President Vivian Clark Armistead to discuss their partnership with Providence Health to vaccinate people in underserved communities. Thank you both so much for joining us today. Thank you. Thank you. Ab us. Absolutely. Also, Ayanna White with Power in Changing talks about the needs for babies during COVID. Didn't even know there was a need. Ayanna, thank you so much for joining us. We're looking forward to talking to you today. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. Find out more about these efforts and how you can help next on Coping with COVID. But first, your COVID community updates. FEMA will begin to reimburse families for funeral expenses of loved ones who passed away last year from COVID. Now, beginning next month, the agency will pay $9,000 for one family member and up to $35,000 for multiple family members. FEMA is setting up a hotline and full service call center that will be announced soon. But right now, people are encouraged to gather up documents like death certificates and receipts for any funeral expenses. DHEC has set up a site for people to find out where to get the Janssen vaccine. Now, many people are interested in the one-shot vaccination and want to know how to find out where to get it. DHEC has a list that's updated daily and can be accessed at the website right there on the screen. That information will be scrolling at the bottom of the screen throughout the show also. 
Finally, Prisma has made some changes. They will now allow limited visitation to their hospitals. One visitor between 8 a.m. and 6 p.m. with extended stay under special circumstances. Two people from pediatric patients. Also, all visitors must wear masks. Prisma will also phase out their drive-through COVID testing sites with most ending by April. Again, you can see that information right there on the screen. SED Hack has your most up-to-date listing of times, dates, and locations for uh, COVID vaccinations, COVID testing, and more at scdhack.gov. Now, if you do want a place to get tested, you can visit gogettested.com. There you can find out where the lo nearest location is to you. Get your appointment, locations, and get results in 48 hours. It's gogettested.com. The DHEC Care Line is also open and available there. You can get info on testing, vaccinations, organizing a COVID screening at your event or in your neighborhood, transportation to get a test, and of course, information about the COVID vaccine. Now, speaking of transportation, if you or someone you know is unable to be transported in Richland and Clarendon counties, paramedics there will actually go to your home and do a COVID test. Call 911 for more information. Now, yesterday, of course, we talked to Congressman Clyburn, who said that they are actually setting up in-home COVID vaccinations also. We'll tell you about that as more information becomes available. COVID vaccinations are happening in several places in South Carolina, including Lexington Med Medical Center. Uh, you can see the information on the screen to get uh, your vaccination there. If you are a veteran, the VA is handling all veteran vaccinations, regardless of what phase you're in or what age you are. The VA is open to vaccinate all veterans. Kroger pharmacies are also uh, offering vaccinations. Uh, check the screen for details about that. And CVS is also a, a local chain that's offering vaccinations. Also, they're offering those vaccinations in CVSs that are located within Target stores. Again, you can check the screen for more information about getting your COVID vaccine at CVS or Kroger pharmacies. Now, if you or someone you know is a senior citizen and having some challenges making a COVID vaccination appointment, <clears throat> They can go to Get Set Up. It's online registration help. They can call that number and someone will be available to help get them set up to make their appointment for a COVID vaccination. Now, a couple of other things, uh, the hospitality, um, the, the hospitality uh, community is uh, having a free vaccination event. That's this Friday from 12 until 4 at the Columbia Vaccination Center at the Columbia, Me Co Columbia Metropolitan Convention Center. It's uh, sponsored by the Restaurant and Lodging Association. They're doing that vaccine clinic. Also, the Lexington Medical Center is sponsoring a vaccination clinic at Swansea High School. That's this Saturday from eight until three o'clock. Now, the NAACP is also offering housing assistance. They have a housing assistance program and it's for landlords, mortgage companies, and tenants. See the information on the screen, reach out to them, <clears throat> excuse me, if you need more information. Also, SC Legal Services and SC Bar Associations have a free toll-free number and website for rental and mortgage help. We're actually going to talk to attorney Edie Lane next Thursday. She's going to give us some great information. If you are behind in your rent or your mortgage and you need to know what your legal rights are. Also, the City of Columbia six-month payment plan is still in effect. They're helping you with your water bill, and they are giving payment assistance up to 75%. If you need some help with online school or work, Rashonda Pratt's YouTube channel is still up and going. Please go over there and hit the subscribe button so you can get the information and the help that you need. The Affordable Care Act open enrollment is still going on until May 15th. Again, you can go to healthcare.gov, visit signupsc.org, or you can see the phone number listed on the screen. Again, all of this information will be scrolling at the bottom of the screen throughout the show. So make sure you can get that information if you need it. A couple of job openings want to let you know about Rapid Reliable is actually uh, recruiting for uh, job openings in South Carolina. They have medical and non-medical and administrative openings available. Visit rrtesting.com. And it's Women's History Month, and uh, the uh, WNBA has a beautiful T-shirt and hoodie that they are promoting with the proceeds going to the National Council of Negro Women. 
Finally, it's a Black Lives Matter has a $3 million scholarship fund that they are awarding $1,000 in grants to African Americans in need due to the pandemic. Now, there is special consideration for those who are single parents, guardians, formerly incarcerated, and also transgender individuals. You can see the information up on the screen. Please reach out to them if you want more information about that. I'm Trey Taylor. You're watching Coping with COVID, updates on the pandemic, and information to help you thrive and survive COVID-19. Please post, share, follow, and like us. We are streaming live on the TaylorMade Productions page. That's the home of Coping with COVID. Once again, please go over there and hit the like button, hit the follow button, so that you can know when we go live, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday at 2 p.m. And of course, on First Mondays, we're live with uh, comedian George Wallace. Also, we have a presence on Instagram and on Twitter. So please like and follow. We're also streaming live on the TaylorMade Production YouTube page. <clears throat> so again, please hit the subscribe button so that you can be up to date. Want to remind you one more time to get your copy of the Dash for Good Health Southern Soul Cookbook and a Coping with COVID face mask. It's free to anyone who wants it. All you have to do is post in the chat, I want a Dash for Good Health cookbook and someone will contact you from SCD Heck to get your mailing address and we'll get it right back out to you. That's our partnership with In It Together SC and the Diabetes Advisory Council. They sponsor Wellness Wednesday every Wednesday here on Coping with COVID. Well, Columbia, South Carolina, City uh, Councilman Ed McDowell has partnered with Prisma Health to Providence Health to do a grassroots COVID vaccination campaign. He's here with the president of the MLK Community Organization, Vivian Clark Armistead, to tell us about it and how you can be involved. Thank you both so much once again for joining us today. Thank you. Thank you so much for having us. Absolutely. So, Ed, first of all, tell me how this partnership began between you and Providence to go out in the community and help vaccinate some folks. Well, Trey, first of all, just let me say a word of thanks to you and all that you do for this community as it relates to um, COVID-19. Actually, about two months ago, there was some sincere and genuine conversation about the need to get folk vaccinated. Mm -hmm. uh, we talked with a group of folk from Providence, Terry Gunn, the CEO of Providence, and of course, uh, Martha Smith, who's not here today, wanted to be here, a board member, uh, our community presidents, uh, Providence and the staff that has helped us continuously with the effort of getting folk vaccinated. We wanted to make sure that when folk, when the process started, we wanted to make sure that folk could, uh, of course, get vaccinated. There was no immediate, there was no immediate source for that. So that was a part, Trey, of that conversation. And of course, after that, we started primarily in the Waverly community. And I think you know that it has metastasized from the Waverly community into other communities within the city. This idea has been fully and well accepted um, within the confines of this city of ours. Uh, as of today, we have vaccinated uh, over 1,000 persons. Wow. Uh, remember now, this has been all grassroots. Those persons who sat around the table with us as we tried to configure how we were going to do this. Uh, Ellie Davis of the Lion Street community, uh, Kit Smith, all of those persons were instrumental in making this effort come alive. Why did you think it was important with all of the other vaccine efforts going on, Ed, to kind of focus in on this community, so to speak? Well, of course, of course, of course, I serve District 2, and of course, <laughs> District 2 represents areas within the confines of this district where vaccinations were certainly needed and wanted. Now, remember, there are a lot of folk who wanted to get vaccinated and could not get vaccinated. They wanted mm -hmm. to know more information. And of course, the way our process worked was, was simply to get that person's name, to get that person's birthday, 
And of course, we've worked through uh, 1A and 1B. And of course, uh, those persons, it was essential that if we were going to make this city of ours healthy, we needed to make sure that all the communities within this city had a needle or could get a needle in their arm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. So we want to um, bring uh, Vivian back in to find out what what types, what what is the MLK Community Association doing, um, Vivian, to help with the efforts? Thank you again for joining us. I, I think she's yeah, frozen. <laughs> approach yeah. the uh, neighborhood association to the vaccine becoming available um, COVID testing site um, partnership with the right <coughs> testing um, every day without appointment walk we were already starting to try to get the addressing COVID so it's health uh, with my with the um, uh, five points a uh, unification of neighborhood association. Um, join the city of Columbia and Mr. Knocking on doors uh, to find people that may be homebound, that people may be elderly people that um, had hesitations about the uh, a vaccine, that if you talk to them face to face and you provided them assistance and an opportunity, that there were more, some of the uh, vaccine hesitancy, we were able to address face to face seeing people. And we had donations from Dr. Bambi Gaddis and the Wright Wellness Center, where when you knocked on the doors, we had a bag with face masks and hand sanitizers. And so bringing, bearing gifts, people were more receptive. And like uh, Councilman McDowell said, over have been vaccinated. And so since it worked so successfully and it was so important to MLK, uh, I, um, uh, you know, with uh, uh, Councilman McDowell, um, uh, volunteering with him is like an indentured servitude. You don't <laughs> get out of it. So the next thing I know, I was knocking on doors in Greenview, in College Place, you know, uh, wherever he called. Yeah. And so trying to get the uh, African-American community who has been disproportionately impacted by COVID, like most uh, health disparities, uh, we have uh, transportation issues. We have social economic uh, determinants of health that we had to address. And this was an opportunity to come together as a community and as a neighborhood association uh, with the city and with Mr. McDowell um, spearheading it to actually help people get the vaccine until we get enough people vaccinated. What we call our new normal is people that wanting the normalcy back, then get vaccinated. That yeah. will help us get closer to getting back. Yeah, that's Vivian Clark Armistead. She is uh, the president of the MLK Lower Waverly Community Foundation, along with uh, Edward McDowell, Reverend Ed McDowell. He is a Columbia City Councilman. You know, I want to talk a little bit about that vaccine hesitancy that you talked about, Vivian. I'm glad you brought it up because I I know, you know, again, talking to Congressman Clyburn yesterday and just being black, we know that there is vaccine hesitancy. And, 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 and you know, <clears throat> How are you, um, and I'm glad to hear that you are able to break through to people when you can talk to them face to face. That's mm -hmm. great to know. So do you think that that is um, a route to go? Because we are among, of everyone that has been vaccinated worldwide, we are less than 10%, African-Americans are less than 10% of those that are being vaccinated. Some of it is accessibility and you guys are certainly, um, you know, targeting that. And of course this, this new COVID money is, is supposedly targeted at rural communities. But a lot of it is, again, hesitancy about the vaccine, which is a deep rooted hesitancy about the, the healthcare system for black and brown people. So are you seeing, that's a long question to ask, are you all seeing that you really are able to break through and really change people's minds by kind of face-to-face -face conversation? Either of you can answer the question. Yes, and, and a lot of times I start with, first you address the elephant in the room. You address what is actually true. 
which is we have been mistreated by the medical association. Yes, yes. It took a hundred years for them to apologize for that. You had the Tuskegee study that didn't get apologized to until Bill Clinton. You got mm -hmm. Hel uh, uh, Helena Harriet. Lackey. Yeah, Harriet Harriet Lackey. Lackey. You have all of those things and you acknowledge that. You don't dismiss somebody's truth. And so you acknowledge that. And like I had um, a one person that was saying that it's too soon. I don't know what's in it. And so then, and, and we were in a group of people and I asked the question, have any of you ever been vaccinated before? Have you taken your children through childhood mm -hmm. immunizations? And they said, yes. And I asked the question, okay, well, what was in it? Mm -hmm. So now from the university medical school of the streets, you want to know what's in COVID. <laughs> yeah. You know? yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, yeah. and I said, one thing you know for sure is that you don't want COVID. Right. So that sort of moves them away from uh, being able to hold on to that. And so then you start to try to move into um, risk versus benefit. Mm -hmm. What's the risk? What's the benefit? And just having a conversation with someone like myself or, and Council McDowell saying I've had both my vaccinations and there is such a feeling of relief. Yeah. Once you've had your vaccinations, you're not that you won't get it, not that, but now I don't worry that I might die. I might yeah. end up on a respirator. I might yeah. end up in an ICU. And so, um, you know, for years I've worked in HIV and I told them like in the beginning when none of us knew anybody that had it, every black person knew someone. Same thing has happened with COVID. Well, first we knew no anyone. Now everybody knows somebody that's had a positive COVID test almost. Mm -hmm. And so to move away from that, you know, it's a matter of, 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 of being proactive about your own health and giving that person that decision and having that conversation with them. And sometimes just letting them vent why they say they're not hesitant. And when you finish having the conversation, they may say, you know what? Uh, I, I think about my grandchildren. I want to visit yeah. people. I want to go out again. I want to go to a concert, you know. And so if you want our normal back, the vaccine is the quickest route that we have now. Right. Trey, Ed, were you going to jump in there? Yeah, Trey, one of the things that has helped tremendously with this grassroots movement, of course, we've had volunteers mm -hmm. to go door to door door to door, we gridded out. Initially, we would grid out a community and we would go door to door saying to folk the need to have this vaccination. Mm -hmm. Now, we understand that there's some reluctancy in that. I think you know that in the midst of the African-American community in terms of vaccination, we're looking at somewhere between eight to 10% right. of those persons being vaccinated. The majority, of course, are being vaccinated. How do you do that? Well, the first thing you do in this movement, of course, is that you you meet folk, you talk to them, you try to dispel some of the right, make them comfortable. You, you, exactly, you got to make folk comfortable. You got to rid yourself of those some of those com conspiracy uh, ideas. Yeah, if, if this shot I'm being injected with with a chip of some sort this is about health and of course there are three i think visible options you can take you mm -hmm. can take the vaccination you can get sick and, and perhaps come down with something that will perhaps lead to death what we're trying to do is to educate and to get needles in arms and a part of that is talking to folk that we haven't done and we don't do a lot of yeah we dispel some of those rumors mm -hmm. some of those people. theories and get that needle in the arm we're talking people to accept accept information from people that they know people right, that they're right. familiar with so yeah. knocking on their doors and introducing themselves and having that conversation it's almost as if they know you now yeah. And so now they're listening to you. People don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. Yeah. So if you care enough on a Saturday morning in the cold to be knocking on their doors, you're showing people that you care. Mm 
Yeah, absolutely. We're talking to uh, City Councilman Reverend Ed McDowell and uh, the president of the MLK Lower Waverly Community Association, Vivian Clark Armistead, about the grassroots efforts that they are doing in the Columbia, South Carolina community, uh, partnering with Providence. So where are these events taking place? So you guys are doing events and going door to door. Is that what's happening? We doing it? No, we're. Not. I tell you, going door to door is that's that's the primary. That's primary. Okay. Right. Let's say uh, my wife, who is not here, Jeannie McDowell, uh, has been very instrumental along mm -hmm. everybody else in making sure that those persons are not only engaged, but also they are able to get that shot and get it rather quickly. So it's not about events. Uh, we will meet. We will meet on Saturday morning, somewhere between eight thirty and nine o'clock, at the Ridgewood Ridgewood Church, where food boxes will be uh, given away. And of course, a part of what we will do is to continue to register folks. And the registration is simply. I mean, it's easy. Mm -hmm. What we will ask those persons is their name, their birthday, and where they live. Their name, their birthday, and where they live. We've also partnered with uh, Walmart uh, and, of course, with Providence. Uh, so it's, it's, it's readily available. All we need you to do is to come forth and say, I want this vaccination. Uh, All right. And, and where are the vaccinations being held? Do people have to go to Providence and yeah. to think of the Okay. That's correct. They have to go to Providence. And of course, there uh, the Comet has provided transportation. Free transportation. Mm -hmm. That's right. For persons who would like to have the vaccination. Uh, the biggest thing now, Trey, is that how do you say, for example, you've got a person who is paralyzed from the waist down and mm -hmm. he or she wants their their vaccination. How do we how do you do that? Those are some of the hurdles right. that we've got to jump through. And of course the biggest hurdle right now is making sure that we're knocking on doors and we're saying to folk, we can give you that, get that vaccination in your arm. Mm -hmm. Hi, we're and talking it, and we're it, talking it, to it, Reverend it, Go ahead. And if they can't catch the comet, if they call that number that you displayed, we will also provide dollar rides because everybody can't get to the bus either. So we okay. will provide transportation. All right. So people can to schedule their COVID vaccine vaccine. It's 803-256-5588. Again, you can see the number on the screen. Um uh, if they want to get the vaccine. And then you said at at the at the at where at the church this Saturday. Now people have to come and get the boxes, right? And then they can schedule their vaccine while they're there? No, no. What we what we what it is, it's a it's a collaboration between three churches. And of course they did it this morning and of course they will do it this coming Saturday. Uh St. John, um Greater St. Luke and um Gee whiz. Ridgewood. I, I can't think of the other right now. Uh, Ridgeway, Ridgewood <laughs> Baptist Church. Boxes will be delivered. And of course, while they are in line, we will be we will be passing out information about COVID and okay. at the same time registering them as they sit in their car. Now, if people want to help, Ed, if people want to help the efforts to help uh, to help you guys go door to door, how can they do that? Is, are you still looking for volunteers? As, as many as we can get. <laughs> our biggest our biggest volunteers group was last Saturday at the college place community. I think we had 15 to 20 some odd persons. Uh, so if you're interested in volunteers, volunteering, after we identify a geographical area, we will simply ask that you come and be with us. Okay. Most of our presidents at the various communities, of course, are saying we want this to come into our community. Right. And that has been a tremendous help. It's That's a lot great. Of, it's a lot of work, but it's worth it. 
So if if a neighborhood is interested in you in having a group like this come canvas their neighborhoods to pass out the information about the vaccinations, and of course, as uh, Vivian said, give them a little get goodie bag, uh, then they can contact you guys, and then you'll work with them to work out a Saturday that that can happen. Is that correct? That's correct. Okay. That's correct. All right. All right. All right. So uh, people is there uh, and, and if people want more information and can get updates, they can check out this number. Also, they can call that number to get a vaccine and call that number to find out more information. That's correct. That's correct. All right. Anything and, else? Go, go ahead, Ed. Sorry, Trey. And of course, I'm, I, I hate to interrupt. Gee whiz. I'm very passionate about this and I'm very every person that has assisted us, Vivian, and the presidents of our community or community organizations, they've been very resilient and very receptive to this idea. Mm -hmm. All of us have had that all of us have had our vaccines. There there are no ill effects. Uh, actually we need your help. We need your help. It doesn't matter it doesn't really matter what vaccine you take, just as yeah. long as you get inoculated with one of the vaccines. What we want to do, of course, and let me say this again, all of this is grassroots. None of these volunteers are being paid for this. This is because they are, are passionate about this virus and passionate about getting that needle in the arm. So if you want to, if you want to volunteer, 803-351-8747. Will you take college students? Mitchell Peace Joy Jen wants to know, uh, can college students participate also? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. All right. All right. Reverend Ed McDowell with the uh, City of Columbia and Vivian Clark Armistee with the uh, MLK Lower Waverly uh, Community Foundation. For more information about the vaccinations and about the vaccination effort, you can see the number there, 803-351-8747. Thank you both so much for, um, you know, really caring about the community. I mean, you could just you could have got your vaccine and gone to the house, you know what I mean? But but you guys are really um, doing some and you're right. And it's going to take grassroots efforts, because as Vivian, you mentioned, there are people that are seriously concerned. Black and brown people are concerned and, you know, bad news spreads like wildfire. So when one person says they not gonna get it, a million people are gonna say it. And then we are affected. We were disproportionately affected by the virus. And now it looks like, hopefully not, but we are now, uh, you know, not being affected by the vaccine because of so much misinformation. So um, I appreciate, you know, the fact that you guys are going out there in our communities and making sure that these black and brown folks are getting vaccinated because we are, again, could potentially be at the bottom of the barrel because we're, we're missing the boat. Yeah. And I want to thank you, Trey. I've been knowing you um, <laughs> um, years. I was a mere child. <laughs> and, 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 Me too. <laughs> in all of these years, you've always been involved in bringing information to the community. You helped us years ago in HIV bring information to the community, health information. And anybody uh, that has a city council representative like Councilman McDowell, you know, if your council person isn't like him, you need to think <laughs> about who you voted for because right. he's out there with us every Saturday that we've been out there. He's been right there spearheading it. And without him and without Martha Smith and Providence Health, uh, people like Kit Smith, people like Jeannie, we couldn't Jeannie. have done this. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Well, thank you both so much. Again, don't forget to call that number if you want more information. And I appreciate all the efforts you do. Please keep me involved and informed so that I can continue to get the information out to the public. Thank you both so much. I appreciate thank you so it. Much. Thank Absolutely. You. Coming up next, what are the needs of babies during COVID? Have you ever thought about that? Well, luckily, one organization is not only thinking about it, but also filling the needs. Ayanna White with Power of Changing is coming up next on Coping with COVID. I'm Trey Taylor. 
Coping with COVID, updates on the pandemic, and information to help you thrive and survive COVID-19. It's brought to you by SCDHEC. Visit scdhec.gov for an updated list of testing and vaccination sites and info to help protect yourself, your family, and friends from the coronavirus. SCDHEC, healthy people, healthy communities. In it together, SC and the South Carolina Diabetes Advisory Council presenting Wellness Wednesday every Wednesday on Coping with COVID. The City of Columbia Office of Business Opportunities, helping to meet the needs of small, minority, and women-owned businesses in the City of Columbia. Visit columbiasc.net backslash OBO. Agape Counseling and Training Services. Call 803-779-2777 for licensed professionals of counselors and social workers helping families, engaged and married couples, and individuals of all ages gain an understanding of all aspects of their lives. If you're having a challenge coping with COVID, visit Agape Counseling and Training services at agapects.com. The Comet Bus System, a fast, fun, friendly transit system that can take you anywhere you want to go in the Midlands. So don't miss your shot. Catch the Comet and get a free ride to get your COVID vaccine. Visit catchthecomet.gov. Javis Tax Services, South Carolina's premier full-service financial provider with over 20 years of experience. Palmetto Media Connections, connecting media and communities together. And Computers Unique, Dutch Square Mall. Call Daniel for honest, professional, reliable, and knowledgeable computer sales and service. Coping with COVID from SCDHEC. In it together, the South Carolina Diabetes Advisory Council, the City of Columbia Office of Business Opportunities, Agape Counseling and Training Services, the Comet Bus System, Palmetto Media Connections, Javis Financial Services, and Computers Unique. Coping. Coping with COVID with Trey Taylor. Need health insurance? Call Javis at 803-419-1001. Javis can get you health insurance premiums as low as zero, plus other low-cost and affordable options. 803-419-1001. Javis Tax Service. Let Javis help you file your taxes. And if you need it, get a cash advance from $500 to $6,000. Javis Tax Services. 803-419-1001. Javis Tax Service. JavisTax.com. Hi, I'm Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. Because of the COVID-19 virus, we have had to learn new ways to be together. We've had to find new ways to communicate. <laughs> we have to find new ways to play. And we have to find new ways to keep each other safe. For myself and my family, I'm going to take the COVID-19 vaccine. To learn more about the vaccine, go to cdc.gov. Let's do this together. Coping with COVID celebrates Women's History Month. Jackie Holmes is the first African-American woman elected to the Newberry, South Carolina City Council District 5. Since her induction, she's completed the Municipal Elected Officials Institute of Government and the Rotary Leadership Institute Virtual Facilitator Training Certification Program. The proud U.S. Army veteran has a tremendous love for God, family, and her community, and is a well-respected educator and mentor to many. Jackie Holmes, the first African-American woman elected to the Newberry City Council District 5. Celebrating every woman. It's a Woman's History Month celebration on Coping with COVID from Taylor Made Productions. You're watching Coping with COVID updates on the pandemic and information to help you thrive and survive COVID 19. I'm Trey Taylor. Thank you again so much for joining us. Hey, don't forget to like, follow, post, and share. We're streaming live on the TaylorMade Productions page on Facebook, also streaming live on YouTube, and would love for you to subscribe and post and share. Hey, don't forget also, you can get your copy of the Dash for Good Health Southern Soul Cookbook. There it is. And a Coping with COVID face mask. It's free. If you want it, all you have to do is post in the chat, I want a Dash for Good Health cookbook. Someone will get to you to get your mailing address and the folks at DHEC will get it right out to you. It's the Dash for Good Health cookbook. It's part of our uh, partnership 
with In It Together SC and the South Carolina Diabetes Advisory Council. They sponsor Wellness Wednesday every Wednesday here on Coping with COVID. Today, we're talking about COVID efforts in the city of Columbia. Ayanna White joins us now. She's with Power and Changing. It's a nonprofit joined in, uh, formed in 2015. It's affiliated with several national organizations and partners with over 20 state and local agencies and five South Carolina counties to raise funds, organize community baby showers, host workshops, and also to help provide families with diapers and other needs for the little ones in our lives. Today, she joins us to remind us that even during COVID, this vulnerable population need help also. Ayanna, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate it. Absolutely. So listen, what are the needs for uh, during COVID for babies and why is it a need? So Power and Changing was established primarily as a diaper bank. And what we have found, um, uh, especially after um, the pandemic happened, or is taking place, um, is that we are needed more than ever um, for those essential needs such as diapers, wipes, um, other baby essentials like bottles, sippy cups, things like that, and also um, period products or feminine products for women oh, and girls. Wow. Mm -hmm. All these things are not covered by any social assistance. And so what we're here to do is provide that at no cost to families that uh, may be suffering due to COVID, um, you know, with all the craziness that's happening um, with the pandemic or just having a hardship or low income, suffering from low income. Well, let me ask you this first. Why did you recognize, how did you recognize that it was a need for you to even uh, start Power and Changing? So I myself, I'm a single mom of two beautiful kids, Amina and Seth. And my youngest, Amina, she's six years old now. But at the time she was a baby, I was working an hourly position. And um, I noticed that, um, well, honestly, it was a Wednesday afternoon. Um, my daycare called me and said, she's down to our last four diapers. I wasn't getting paid until Friday. Mm. So I stressed, um, I didn't know what to do. I didn't know how to handle this. Um, I knew that I could probably bounce a check and see how that was gonna work out. Yeah, <laughs> But yeah. I knew that was gonna give me an, a, an ongoing cycle of always being behind, not able to catch up on my bills. Um, but luckily some my family came through $50. $50 is all it took for me to end the rest of the week until I got paid um, with groceries, gas, and diapers. And diapers. So could, and yeah. so she could have them at home and at um, daycare. Yeah. And so that's how it, we all started. Yeah. So it was, came, and as most things do, girl, it comes out of a personal uh, yeah. situation. I love that. So um, what where do you find is your typical client, especially right now during COVID? Who is in need of diapers? Well, any family that's facing a hardship is in need. Um, usually our clients come from Facebook. Um, they follow us on Facebook and it's a word wow. of mouth. Um, uh, we are referral based. Um, so we do partner with other local nonprofit agencies. We also give other local nonprofit agencies items um, of diapers and wipes. So um, so they can, our, well, so they can make our reach a little bit further um, mm -hmm. as opposed to um, us trying to target everybody ourselves. So um, it's we're still referral, we're very word of mouth and social media has helped a lot with um, people following us. Yeah, I can imagine with, as you said, everything happening with COVID, people losing their sources of income, losing their jobs. And the other thing you said is big, even SNAP does not provide for those essentials. Yes. And that's something that I really hope um, gets advocated for because yes. you, yes, you need food, but if you're a mom, you need diapers too. And that's an essential, that's an yes. essential item. What we Do found is that, um, I'm sorry, I cut you off. No, go ahead, go ahead. <laughs> but what we found out is that um, families who aren't able to access those basic resources for an infant, which we know um, in growing a child or rearing a child um, is the most expensive time period for the family um, in infancy. Um, we know that they cannot continue work or continue education. So it just provides that whole cycle of poverty over and over again, because you're always trying to catch up, yeah. but without basic essentials that aren't covered by any social safety net, it's hard to do so. 
We're talking to Ayanna White. She uh, formed Power in Changing to help <laughs> provide uh, diaper needs and baby needs for uh, families who need it. And particularly now uh, in the midst of COVID, COVID, when so many people are struggling financially, okay. that is something that is needed, especially if you're just trying to keep a roof over your head, keep your electricity on and food on the table. Diapers, you know, uh, kind of become low on the totem pole, but they're high <laughs> on the totem pole too, if you've got babies. So you say that you, um, identify most of your uh, people that, you know, come to you are from social media. Yes. Um, Facebook, when the flood happened in 2015, um, we put out a social media flyer and just said, we're giving out diapers. That was one of our very first one uh, distributions and uh, no office, no money, no anything. We mm -hmm. just got a pallet of diapers donated to us. And we said, we're giving them out. And we served probably close to around 300 people wow. at that time period. Um, since then, we have distributed, since 2015 of being formed and serving our very first um, diaper distribution, we have um, distributed over 180,000 diapers. And that's just in almost five and a half years. So wow. we have a lot of work to do. Um, I can say 2020 was our biggest year, um, being that we gave out 99,000 diapers and kind of put it into perspective. In 2019, we gave out 25,000 diapers for the entire year. It um, tripled. And, and it tripled, exactly. <laughs> Yeah. Centrell Thompson says service together one family at a time. She, hashtag ending diaper needs. Thank you, Centrell. <laughs> so much for joining us. I want to say hi to Richard Miner. Also, everyone who's joining us today on uh, Coping with COVID. I'm Trey Taylor. We're talking to Ayanna White with a Power in Changing. So where do you get diapers from? So we're a very grassroots organization. Um, Centrell, she's also um, another partner with us. She um, has a maternity um, health uh, page, and I'm sorry if I butchered the names in front of but she services like Florence area, Marion County, Dillon, things like that, um, and in those areas. Um, but uh, we get diapers from the public, grants, um, partnering with other national agencies um, like Baby to Baby and the National Diaper Bank Network. Um, and yeah, we have to very much solicit for the items that we get. Um, yeah. So that's how we get items for the diaper bank and other essentials. The public has, once they hear the story, they kind of just understand that this is something that is not covered by any social safety net um, and that it's, it could happen to anybody. Um, in fact, one in three families across the nation suffer from um, diaper need. Mm -hmm. So um, that's a big stat. And so it can happen to anybody. And when they hear that, they yeah. just feel obligated or compelled to donate. So what can the public do, Ayana? What do you need? So right now, um, there's a lot of grants and everything that is going towards COVID. Um, and, and rightfully so. We're in a pandemic. Um, we do qualify for some of the grants, but some of those grants don't cover overhead. Um, so what we're doing is we're constantly fundraising, seeking financial donations to keep our doors open and to keep our um, mission alive. We're also um, looking for people to advocate for diaper need um, and also uh, shop. <laughs> we do have a shop. I'm sorry, just in talking. One of our fundraisers is um, Shop for a Cause, and it's called Bows and Bells. And, and basically what that is, is that we have a small children's boutique that people can shop um, at, and 100% um, of the proceeds go directly to Power and Changing and serving the Midlands um, throughout, or serving the counties that we service. All right. So if people want to, so you said you need people to be advocates or to be um, spokespeople or to advocate for you. Uh, do you need diapers? Do you need money or do you need diapers? We need all of it. Okay. We are very <laughs> grassroots. We are grassroots organizations, 100%. We are not state funded. We are not federally funded. So um, donation of diapers can go a long way. A donation of $20 can provide a mother with um, a layette, a nice diaper layette. And that consists of about 50 diapers, a baby blanket, some baby shampoo, baby wipes, and also some bottles. So $20 can give a mom in need just that. Um, so yeah, we're in need of everything, um, you know. <laughs>
Right, right. It's hard right. to just talk about a nonprofit that doesn't, you know, have a need. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So if people want more information about power and changing. Uh, I think we have your information uh, that we can put up and uh, people can contact you at that phone number. And then you have a website, powerandchanging.org. And uh, people can connect with you there if they want to do a recurring donation. I'm going to challenge um, all of our viewers to do a $5 a month. I mean, I do as much as you can, but at least if you can do a monthly donation, I'm sitting here in my head thinking, um, you know, do $5 a month. I, I think you can afford, if you can afford $5 a month, if you can afford more, definitely do that. But do something on a monthly basis to um, help provide diapers for people in need. And because, um, you know, like you said, I, you just don't know during these days and times where you're going to be in a position where you need something from somebody, you know? Yes. Yes. And diapers, like you said, it's always the lowest on the totem pole. They don't, people don't think about it. And a lot of the backlash that we used to get was that cloth diapers. Well, cloth diapers aren't DSS regulated um, when mm. you're dealing with childcare facilities. So no, that's not a possibility. Um, it is a option. Um, and it definitely will help the planet. But unfortunately, in this time period we live in, it's just not uh, a reality that a lot of families can and work with. Yeah, that's interesting. That's interesting. Yeah, back in the day, you, you used those cloth yeah. diapers. But, <laughs> but listen, when you um, don't even have a washing machine in your house, cloth diapers are almost you know, you, who who would even think about something like that, you know? No, and you're exactly right. Um, one of the things that we tend to tell people is that you have to professionally launder cloth diapers and you mm. don't have a washer and dryer in your home. How are you washing them? Um, and if that's the case, then you can't take it to a public laundry mat because it's human waste that's on it. Yeah. So you have to be kind of cognitive of ways that um, to clean those. And it's easiest to do is to get disposable diapers. Mm -hmm. And um, that costs a lot of money. Um, to a vulnerable budget, it can be anywhere between 150, uh, excuse me, $80 to $150 per month. And a lot of our families don't have transportation. Right. From the last segment, um, that is true. They don't have transportation and they live in food deserts. So where they go get diapers, they're getting it at a premium at a family dollar, a dollar general. Things that can charge that because they're the only competition in town. And it, it costs a lot of money to be poor or mm -hmm. to go it through does. a hardship. <laughs> it's very expensive. Yeah. So um, I think people really need to realize that. So agencies like ours that are here providing free materials to families in need, we're, you know, we're always available um, as much as possible until we're not, yeah. until we don't need to be. Yeah, and, and hopefully, that becomes a reality at some point. Ayanna White with Power and Changing. I love your story of, um, and, and you know, the greatest efforts come from the situations that we have experienced. So thank you so much for having the courage, Ayanna, to step out and say, I recognize it's a need. I'm going to do something about it. And again, I challenge everyone to uh, not only visit the website or call Ayanna to find out what you can do to help, but to uh, donate what you can on a monthly basis and go to the bows and bells uh, dot square website and uh, find out um you know what you can do and and let's talk soon about um how i can be of assistance because like i said my 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 um my, my brain's going now you know my, my, my wheels are turning my wheels are turning now so uh want to thank everybody uh, for joining us ayana again so much thank you you see the information on the screen please contact ayana and ayana good luck to you god bless you and thank you thank so you. much for your efforts we appreciate it thanks for joining us today on coping with COVID. thank you for having me this has been so much fun i really appreciate it oh absolutely and i saw in the in the chat i'm gonna get your book out to you too you want that oh, yeah. I want that book. <laughs> okay thanks so much ayana i appreciate it Ayanna White, once again, uh, with Power and Changing, the nonprofit formed uh, partners with over 20 state and local agencies in five South Carolina counties to raise funds, organize community baby showers, host workshops, and all to help provide families with diapers and other needs for the little ones in their life. Um, I'm Trey Taylor, and thank you so much for watching Coping with COVID. Coming up tomorrow on Faith Friday, we'll talk to uh, Rosalind Glenn. She's got so much that she can share with you from her work with President Biden to her um, 
run for state treasurer. And she's just such an amazing woman of God. Looking forward to talking to her tomorrow. Next Wednesday on Wellness Wednesday, diabetes and stress. We're going to talk about that. And then Thursday, attorney Edie Lane will join us to discuss what rights you have during COVID as a homeowner and a renter. That's coming up next week on Coping with COVID. And then don't forget that if you want that dash for good health southern soul cookbook that we're giving away in conjunction with wellness wednesday all you have to do is drop it in the chat i want that i want a dash for southern soul i want a dash for good health and uh we'll get that out to you it's the dash for good health southern style cookbook and a coping with covid face mask. We would love for you to have it. And we want to give it to you free, free, absolutely no charge. Hey, as usual, I'm going to leave you with a reading. I usually do Jesus Calling. I'm doing um, 100 Days of Believing Bigger by Marshawn Evans Daniels, because I'm believing God for some big things in my life too. And if you are, I want to share this with you. This is, says, this is about <clears throat> water walking. It says the disciples travel quite a bit with Jesus by boat. They spent every day with him, but for some reason on this occasion, they couldn't recognize Jesus walking toward the water. They weren't comforted or even amazed by a miracle unfolding right before their very eyes. The scripture says that they were terrified. They thought Jesus was a ghost. How interesting that we can confuse what is actually help as something that appears to be harmful. When Jesus told me, told them, be still, it is I, you have nothing to fear. The disciple Peter was the only one who was drawn toward the mystery. Peter said, if it's really you, then command me to meet you on the water. When Jesus said, indeed, come, Peter stepped out into the water and began to walk toward Jesus. But when he realized how high the waves were, he became frightened and stared, started to sink. I love that Jesus was brave, that he asked to be part of an impossible miracle with Jesus. What trust he had. But Peter is no different than you or me. When we lack, when we look at our circumstances, the waves, our faith is punctured. It's not the waves that cause us to sink. It's putting our trust in our circumstances, what we see right now. We put our trust in what we see, not on what we know. And then Jesus says in verse 31, why did you doubt? <clears throat> the prayer says, Lord, make me like Peter. Draw me out of the boat of the familiar and safe man-made methods. I commit to keep my eyes on you. We gotta keep our eyes on the Lord. Invite me into miracles, signs, and wonders. Amen. Are you ready to invite the Lord into your life? Invite all that comes with it, the good, what we think is bad, the waves. It ends up being good. Ayanna White said that. She had a journey and a, and a challenge with getting her child diapers, but she turned it into a beautiful nonprofit to help somebody else. There are going to be some challenges in life, but we can use it for good if we just keep our eyes on him. I'm Trey Taylor. Thank you again so much for joining us on Coping with COVID. Until the next time, I wish you peace, <clears throat> abundant blessings. Take care. Stay well. Get your vaccine. And don't forget to wear your mask over your nose and under your chin. I'll see you tomorrow. Coping with COVID, updates on the pandemic and information to help you thrive and survive COVID-19. It's brought to you by SCDHEC. Visit scdheck.gov for an updated list of testing and vaccination sites and info to help protect yourself, your family, and friends from the coronavirus. SCDHEC, healthy people, healthy communities. In it together, SC and the South Carolina Diabetes Advisory Council presenting Wellness Wednesday every Wednesday on Coping with COVID. The City of Columbia Office of Business Opportunities, helping to meet the needs of small, minority, and women-owned businesses in the City of Columbia. Visit columbiasc.net backslash OBO. Agape Counseling and Training Services. Call 803-779-2777 for licensed professionals of counselors and social workers helping families, engaged and married couples, and individuals of all ages gain an understanding of all aspects of their lives. If you're having a challenge coping with COVID, visit Agape Counseling and Training 
services at agapects.com. The Comet Bus System, a fast, fun, friendly transit system that can take you anywhere you want to go in the Midlands. So don't miss your shot. Catch the Comet and get a free ride to get your COVID vaccine. Visit catchthecomet.gov. Javis Tax Services, South Carolina's premier full-service financial provider with over 20 years of experience. Palmetto Media Connections, connecting media and communities together. And Computers Unique, Dutch Square Mall. Call Daniel for honest, professional, reliable, and knowledgeable computer sales and service. Coping with COVID from SCDHEC. In it together, the South Carolina Diabetes Advisory Council, the City of Columbia Office of Business Opportunities, Agape Counseling and Training Services, the Comet Bus System, Palmetto Media Connections, Javis Financial Services, and Computers Unique. Coping. Coping with COVID with Trey Taylor.